So life on the border is, I think, phenomenal. I think a lot of people, unless you've lived on the border, don't understand how fluid it is. So I, I grew up in um, New Mexico, born in El Paso, Texas, so I was born in the border. But my grandparent, my grandma lived in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. So every summer we would go and visit her and we would stay there with her. And um, you learn so much from both countries, from Mexico and from the United States. And, and I think when people think about the border, they think about the wall and uh, the limits. But to us uh, in El Paso, Ciudad Juarez, and I, I would think from many uh, places along the U.S.-Mexico border, like Tijuana or, or um, Brownsville, we feel the same that is very fluid. We come and go. We would go to Juarez to buy groceries. My father would go on Saturdays to cut his hair. And, and that's the only place where he would get a haircut was in Juarez. So we would take off, he'd cut his hair, and then we'd come back home to, to New Mexico. And uh, we've always seen it as very, very fluid. We, a lot of us have family over there. A lot of a family over there have family over here. So um, I think um, uh, when I think of my idea of the border here, I think of the fluidity of it and how much is fluid, not only physically, but also with um, newspapers. We have newspapers from Juarez and El Paso and Las Cruces, um, the music, the traditions, the food, um, the holidays, all those things are very fluid. Our book is based on a three-year ethnographic study that um, two of my colleagues from the University of Texas in El Paso uh, Maite de la Piedra and Alberto Esquinca and myself, we spent three years in a school located right across the uh, Juarez, so it's very close to the border. You can physically see the border from there. Uh, and we worked for three years with students that we call transfronterizo students, who are the students who go back and forth to Juarez and to El Paso. Some of them travel daily. Um, they live in Juarez and come to school in El Paso. Some of them travel uh, on the weekends and some of them stay, um, uh, go in the summers as well. And uh, we looked at, uh, we started working with three teachers at the beginning, but at the end on the third year, we focused mostly on Miss O, Miss, Miss Ornelas, we'll call her. And she um, was a dynamic teacher working with Transfronterizo students. And she, we learned so much from her about strategies to use in the classroom, how she uses um, the Transfronterizo uh, funds of knowledge from, that the kids bring from Juarez to El Paso, how she uses that in her curriculum, and also how she uses language um, in ways that students feel comfortable speaking and learning both languages. Because it was an ethnographic study, we tried to really just go into the classroom and spend time in the classroom with the teacher. We started off sitting, taking notes, observing, listening, and then eventually the students would come to us for, for questions and we started to get to know the students. The students started to get to know us, uh, especially um, uh, Maite, Dr. De La Piedra. She was, she, she was the one who really got the research started and then she spent a lot of time in the classrooms because she lived, she lives in El Paso. At the time I was living here in Las Cruces so I would go around once a week and spend the time in the classroom. And then we ended up to where we almost took turns. Somebody would be there on Monday, somebody on Tuesday, somebody on Wednesday so that we got uh, the whole picture of what the classroom looked like in a week, uh, during the week. And uh, we would just sit with the kids. We would observe the teacher. We would take notes. We collected journals, uh, work assignments. We also interviewed um, groups of students. We interviewed the administrator, the uh, assistant principal, the principal, the social worker, and the teachers. And, and we, we learned so much. We also learned that the principal and the assistant principal were from the community where they were working at and a lot of the teachers were transfronterizas themselves so they crossed back and forth which made a huge difference because they were able to relate to the students and the principal was a transfronterizo too so he was very welcoming of transfronterizo students in the school and he um, he knew what it was to go back and forth on a daily basis or on a weekly basis and to live in both worlds.
So there were several findings. One of them was, I think, that a lot of the teachers, and I think I, I talked a little bit about that, and the principal, the assistant principal, were transfronterizos themselves. So to us, that pointed to the importance of, of the teachers uh, understanding, being understanding of the community and of the students, and how, because they themselves were transfronterizos, um, most of them English learners themselves, they could relate to the students. So it made it um, to where they were able to facilitate the, the curriculum in U.S. schools. Uh, one of the big findings as well was um, the translanguaging. Ms. O was very good at allowing the students to translanguage in the classroom, and translanguaging means they were able to use English and Spanish all mixed. <laughs> and uh, a lot of the research states, uh, the dual language or bilingual ed research states, that you need to separate the languages. But in her classroom, they were using both of them intermingled, and they were learning a lot because they were they were able to understand the context by using both languages. And she was very good about not telling them, don't talk Spanish now, or don't talk English now, or it's English time right now, where we see in a lot of classrooms, and then the students tend to just um, not want to talk anymore. And in this class, she was able to like make them feel comfortable to where they were learning both languages very fluently because they were translanguaging. So that was one of our major findings. We also learned a lot about the violence in Ciudad Juarez. Our study took place um, in 2010 when the violence escalated like huge proportions of, of killings uh, from the drug cartels. So uh, the parents from Juarez were sending their school, all their kids to El Paso because they were afraid for their, for their kids. So they were finding um, grandparents, aunts, uncles, um, godfathers, godmothers, friends who could keep their kids in El Paso at least for the week so they could um, go to school and um, not be in Juarez during the, the violent times. So we learned a lot about the violence. The students told us a lot of stories about violence um, that they had experienced. Um, and one in particular, I remember this little girl telling us that she still smelled the blood in the truck that they were driving in. Um, so it almost became a normal, it became normalized because it was um, everywhere. There was violence everywhere. So she talked about the bullet holes in the truck that her dad was driving and the smell of blood. Um, we learned about uh, a father who sent her little girl, his little girl to the school where we were working at um, because he had just lost his other child in Juarez. So, he just wanted to keep her from danger and, and he sent her to El Paso and she was at, at our school. So we just, um, story after story after story about, about violence. We also learned about the different literacies that students bring from Ciudad Juarez and use in El Paso. So they were um, talking about comics in Spanish that they were reading in, in Juarez in Spanish, but they would use them in the classroom to create their own comic strips in their classroom. Um, jokes. Mm, journals. We had a little girl who was using the uh, lyrics from the rock songs in YouTube. So we, we looked at uh, digital literacies that were crossing over to the United States. So she was uh, looking at rock songs. She liked rock and she would look at YouTube and look at the lyrics and she was learning English by using the lyrics of the rock songs that she liked a lot. And, um, and she would bring that into the classroom as, and use it in the classroom as, as her curriculum. And uh, I think um, we also learned about the strategies that Ms. O was using in the class because she was like dynamic. She was an amazing teacher. And she would just create these spaces where students felt free and open to, to ideas and to speaking in Spanish or English or Spanglish or whatever they wanted to speak in, she would allow it. And, um, and she would use a lot of multi-modalities, and that's one of our major findings as well, where she was not just lecturing. We hardly ever saw her lecture. They would, um, she would use posters, role modeling, um, music, videotaping. The students were video produ producing videos, uh, all kinds of multi-modalities to learn. And she was doing it in both English and Spanish, and then from ideas from what is that the students brought, or from the US as well. So I think, Literacy, multimodalities, translanguaging, um, the violence in what is the knowledge of violence that they brought with them. All those were some of our major findings. And then the, the big issue that a lot of the, the 
um, teachers could relate to the students because they themselves were trans transfronterizos. I think, um, I think that we learned a lot about the, the children's community cultural wealth where they bring all the, the wealth from their communities from Ciudad Juarez or from El Paso into the classroom or their funds of knowledge. So they bring all these um, knowledges that they're learning outside of the classroom and Ms. O was allowing them to use those knowledges in the classroom. Where in other classrooms that we see, we are so textbook driven and a lot of the things in textbooks are not relevant to our students, especially students like Transfronterizo students or Latino students. We, we don't value their knowledges in the classroom and Ms. O was really valuing not only their knowledges but their language and that made a huge difference and I think that a lot of us teachers can learn from her and how to use those knowledges, how to use that wealth of knowledge that they bring, how to use their language to, to teach them English and to also teach them context um, in a U.S. school. Um, so I think that we have a lot to learn from Ms. O and, and not only her strategies but her way of being and what she allowed for kids to bring into the classroom that really allowed them to, to learn and to be happy because we saw happy kids in there. They felt good about themselves. I think I want them, the lesson is uh, on how transfronterizo students bring with them a wealth of knowledge that needs to be uh, taken advantage of in the classroom and used in the classroom for relevant curriculum. And I also think that um, we need to see the beauty of the border as well, the fluidity, the beauty of how we, uh, there's been a lot of talk about building walls and building um, the, the big wall between Mexico and the United States, and, but we never see the beautiful things that happen when we cross back and forth a and all the knowledge that we contribute over there and that they contribute over here that we all um, learn from each other and um, that's beautiful to me. <laughs>